This comment says, and then God eventually replaces all of Job's dead kids with new kids, as if that makes it okay. Yeah, this is an example of how the story of Job is a very bad story, but also how it does a pretty good job representing a lot of the really horrible themes that come from the God of the Bible. So what I mean by that is, to start, Job is, regardless of how good he is, Regardless of how loyal he is to God, God doesn't really care in how he acts towards Job. Because as soon as Satan steps in and threatens God's ego, God decides that it's worth killing Job's family and destroying his health and killing his servants. All to show Satan that he's wrong about Job. That is the motivation stated in the story. And so to give any other motivation to God would be adding to the story. His motivation wasn't to teach Job a lesson of some sort to make him stronger or better in some way. Not that that would make it okay to literally kill people in the first place, but that is his motive, to stroke his own ego. And if you look at other stories in the Bible, that motive does not change. For example, the story of Egypt and Moses. Yes, for a while, Pharaoh did not want to let the slaves go, but eventually he changed his mind, but God hardened his heart, made it so that he would not let them go. God interfered with Pharaoh's choice because God was not done showing off yet. He wasn't done stroking his own ego and showing how powerful he was. So he sent more plagues. He sent more destruction. And more innocent people who were literally just collateral damage to God died in the process. And then you can also look at other stories like the flood and Sodom and Gomorrah, where children who did nothing wrong were not considered to actually be people in the story who were worthy of being saved. Instead, they were also just collateral damage, just ended with everybody else. And in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, that's how women are also treated. They're not treated like real people who have their own sense of morality, who have their own actions, who are their own autonomous beings. No, their lives are ended along with the children because of the actions of the men. So the God of the Bible clearly does not consider everybody to be worthy of the title of a human. Some of them are just things that he can play with, that he can destroy. So back to the point in this comment that God eventually just replaces all of Job's dead kids with new ones, as if that makes it better. To the God of the story of Job and a lot of the other stories, especially in the Old Testament, to him it kind of does seem like he would think that that would be an okay answer to the issue that people aren't actually people and that it doesn't matter that the specific children Job lost are gone. What matters is that he has the ownership over these children. What matters is that his property is reinstated and he makes them more beautiful even, which means that it's more of a benefit to Job. But that does not solve the issue. All of the servants that worked for Job are not replaceable. They are human beings. All of the children that Job had before are not replaceable. They were human beings. But God just replaces them with more beautiful children and considers that to be fine. He just decides that that fixes the issue because to the God of the Bible, most people are just collateral. There's a few main characters and outside of that, nobody really matters. And this is a big reason why when a lot of Christians will talk about God being good and loving and caring about everyone and loving everybody equally, it does not align with the God of the Bible. Because while yes, many of these stories are from the Old Testament, that doesn't mean that it's not the same God according to Christian theology. Because that God in the Bible claims to be never changing. And so if he is never changing, if he does not change, then that means all of those same red flags in his personality are still there. And just because some of those actions aren't present in the New Testament, it doesn't mean that they aren't a part of that supposed God. Because if you are claiming as a religion that you have one God and that God is in the Bible, you can't separate the New Testament from the Old Testament and claim that that God doesn't exist when you are also claiming that that God is the creator of everything, the father of Jesus, part of the Holy Trinity. Then you can't separate those horrible actions as a way to try to make you feel better about your idea of God. That should be a part of your idea of God, all of those horrible actions. And as such, that God should not be considered good, loving, merciful, just, because it shows itself time and time again to be none of those things, except for, for a few specific people that it specifically puts as the main characters. Everybody else to that God is collateral damage.